This is Vortrekker. This is Cheeky. This is Kambonde. These are bulls. And these are matriarchs, Mama Africa and Bellatrix. And this is Baby Joy and her mom. I saw herds of elephants. Here's a two-year-old in a hurry. I met these animals on my 31-day trip to Africa in September of 2014. I volunteered with Elephant Human Relations Aid, ERA for short. ERA is a volunteer organization in Namibia that benefits both the animals, the elephants, and the farmers. Volunteer rotations with ERA are for two-week periods, a build week and a patrol week. Most volunteers do more than one rotation. I did two rotations. I was there for four weeks. During my trip to the Namibian desert, I took 527 photos, 76 videos, and I organized these into, uh, and trimmed them down and organized them into base camp, build week, patrol week. I left Albuquerque September 5. and arrived in Johannesburg, South Africa, September 6. The next day I flew to Windhoek, capital of Namibia. Then traveled by van to Swakamund, where volunteers first met Sunday evening, September 7th, at the Villa Ruiz for an introduction by our era leader. The next day we left Swakamund at noon to drive to Ruiz, four hours, and on to era base camp, one hour. This van has seats for 14 persons, which is the normal size of era volunteer groups. As we got closer to Uis and the Uga River, we began to see elephant crossing signs. The roads traveled to Uis and base camp were washboard and dusty. Road graders were often seen. Along the way, we passed roadside stands where the native Herero and Himba people were selling their crafts, mostly necklaces, bracelets, and dolls. We stopped in Uis, a very small leftover tin mining town, filled with gas and got some snack. The two local people of this area of Namibia are the Himba and the Herero. The Himba in their loincloth or goatskin miniskirts appeared more comfortably dressed than the Herero for the heat of the Namibian desert. Base Camp. Here we are arriving at base camp. Here is a hilltop view of the camp. You can see the camp nestled among the rock hills. At base camp, this is the central area. There is an elevated fire pit used for cooking. There's a kitchen and a table. The camp is located along the bank of the Ugab River. The riverbed is dry. There is water flow during the rainy season, which is generally November through April. Here's the treehouse. The treehouse can sleep 14 volunteers comfortably. Here's some pots and pans. The table is used for meetings as well as eating. We had two toilets and two showers. On the first night at base camp, baboons were across the river. They would sometimes spend their nights on these rock cliffs to be away from the predators. It would get pretty loud. They couldn't really sleep, but it was fun listening to them. Some of the volunteers wanted to use earplugs. Another frequent visitor to the camp was the Montero's hornbill. This bird is endemic to Namibia. We all tried to capture the redness of the sunsets. Capturing it in a photo was difficult. Build week. Early Tuesday morning, we headed for the build site. The build site was located southeast of the base camp. It was about an hour and a half drive. At the farm, this is a water tank we were going to build a stone wall around to prevent the elephants from damaging. This water tank stores and provides water for the cattle, donkeys, and goats. First thing we do at the build site is to set up our camp. It was about 100 yards from the tank. Building the wall is hard work. The work involved rock runs, sand runs, mixing cement and wheelbarrows, and the construction of the wall. To build a wall, the first rock layer is about 8 to 10 inches in a trench, and we build up from there. In this picture, we are a few rock levels up. We all work together as a real team. Here is Sanders, Molina, and I working on a section of the wall. Usually, three to four people work together on a section. There are no showers at the build camp. We all took our wet wipe showers. No tree house either. We slept on a ground tarp and had an overhead tarp for shade. Cooking was over the open fire. Two people were assigned each day for cook duty. Breakfast was porridge, not my favorite. Rusk, coffee, and tea. Lunches were sandwiches. Dinners were meats, potatoes, rice, pasta, squash, and other veggies. Dinners were really good and plenty for everyone. We didn't stay up late, but would always spend the evenings gathered around the fire, just talk and relax.
Fast forward a couple weeks, we are back at the build site. We completed the wall in only two more days. There were five of us doing a second build week. Here's the photo of the volunteers of the first build week, along with some of the local farmers who helped a lot with the work. The locals here had minimal income and very little in the way of material possessions, but they appeared comfortable with their lives and were happy. Sometimes it was difficult to communicate. Their main mode of transportation was a donkey and cart. Here are the volunteers of the second build week. These fellow volunteers, aged from 18 to 69, were mostly from Europe, Germany, Holland, Sweden, and the UK, and Canada. I was the only one from the United States. The younger ones were taking a gap year before or during college. They called it university. The rest of us were traveling on vacation or retired. On Saturday, a Herrero lady comes to the camp to wash our clothes. Our clothes are pretty dirty after a build week and she would clean them real nice. She charged 30 Namibian dollars, about three bucks per bag, and I think for any size bag. She would hang the clothes on the line. She didn't separate out individual clothes, so we had to go along the line, locate, and collect our own. Traditionally, the Herrero ladies wore these Victorian style dresses, taken from their colonial past. A variation to the style is the cow horn headdresses. On Saturday before patrol week, we all like to go into Luis. You get a good lunch, go to the store, charge your batteries, and use Wi-Fi. There was a pool there and a few went swimming. There was a ping pong table too. A German gal, Cornelia and I, played quite a bit. She was really good. On arriving back to base camp from Luis, the elephants were there. Our first encounter. They had been there for about an hour already. Cheeky was there, baby Joy and her mom were there, Mama Africa was there. I didn't know these elephants at the time. Now I recognize them. We watched for about two hours, then they moved on. On Sunday mornings, for about four hours, we would do some maintenance jobs around the camp. Then in the afternoons, we'd like to take hikes up on the rocks. Melina was most interested in this climb and she had led the way. I have learned to not just follow the heels in front of me while hiking. I look for my own roots, but she did a real good job. I gave her a high five as we got to the top. It was nearly the highest point in the immediate area of the camp. Patrol Week On the Monday morning following build week, we would go on patrol. On patrol week, we tracked the elephants, check their movements, check their numbers, make sure their health looks good, and just have fun watching them. So, Monday morning, we get up early and load the land cruisers with supplies. Food, water, cooking kettles, bedrolls, tarps, and some miscellaneous items. And each of us had our own personal camping gear. Driving on patrol would be either on double track trails or no tracks at all. We traveled through here, the Ugab Oasis, a point along the river that has permanent water flow. Driving here had its obstacles, but we always made it through, sometimes with extra effort. For lunch, we would stop along the bank of the Ugab and spread out the tarp. Lunches were sandwiches. After lunch, off to track the elephant again. This is Board Tracker. The elephants we met on patrol had names. We learned to recognize the elephants from their identifying features of their ears tusks and tails. Vortrecker was the uh, oldest male. He's about 45 years old. He was the first to come to the Ugab River with Mama Africa. Pretty easy to recognize with his size. He's big. And then he has these big flaring tusks. He has a hole in the ear, which is probably not that big of a deal to identify him. His tusks and his size is what you really notice. This is Mama Africa and her son. She's the matriarch of her herd, of her herd the largest herd in the Ugab River, about 15 elephants. She's pretty easy to recognize also because she has this big notch in her ear. And this is Kambonde. He's a young adult male, kind of an inquisitive little guy. He's a pickpocket. Uh, but he, you can recognize him because he also has some identifiable notches in his ears. This is Cheeky. He's a young adult male. I like Cheeky a lot. He's just a good looking elephant. Uh, he has nice matching uniform tusk. He has a couple notches in his ear you can recognize, but his tail is uh, split hairs are kind of interesting and unique to identify. This is Baby Joy, born in June of this year. She is the youngest in the Ugab herds. These are bulls. They will stay with their mom and herd until their teens. Then they leave the herd. They will usually travel solo or in bachelor herds of three or four. The elephant herds move along the Ugab River. They eat tree branches, leaves, and grasses. They eat a lot, and they have to eat a lot because they only digest about 40% of what they eat. Their GI tracts are not very efficient. It was amazing to watch this gal. You can see her straight branches, rubber eye. She just manipulates the trunk in many different ways. Their trunks have thousands of muscles and can be turned in any direction, and it has tremendous strength.
The goats and cattle like to eat the leftovers after the elephants move on. They can't reach the leaves themselves. Here the elephant are just grazing and drinking in the Ugaba oasis. It was just fun watching them here. Here they are enjoying the afternoon just as we were. This elephant was amused by his trunk. My editor took the cue. You can tell a female from a male elephant easily if the female shows off her breast or if the male shows off a little too. But also you can look at the elephant's forehead. The females are more angular and the males are more rounded. Also look at their underbellies. With the female it is generally more parallel with the ground, where in the male it tends to slant up toward their chest more. This is baby Joy. She tries to nurse. Maybe not right now. Now watch this elephant coming from the left. This is really neat. She plants her left front foot very purposely, puts her trunk down to the ground and curls it a bit. She freezes, motionless. She is listening, sensing vibrations through her trunk and foot. She then turns her head a bit to better see what she is hearing. This male elephant is in must. It's a condition associated with a high testosterone level, aggressive behavior, and they are generally more sexually active during must. You can recognize an elephant in must by the drainage behind the eye from the temporal gland. And also they will drip urine and their hind legs may be wet. So if you recognize a male elephant in must, be careful. Elephants have an ambling gait. Elephants don't run, they just take longer and quicker strides. This elephant got spooked over something, I don't know what. Elephants can and will move quick. Elephants will sleep either standing or lying down. The younger ones seem to prefer lying down. Elephants set boundaries, their personal space. Watch these goats as they approach the elephant. They get too close and the elephant shakes them off. Like the goats, the cattle will also huddle around the elephant to get leftovers. I began to realize if I saw cattle along the river, elephant probably at close by. Here's a busy water point, same observation. The elephants rule, others have to wait their turn. Here's baby Joy again, and yes, she is actually eating poo, her mom's. Babies do this inherently to populate their GI tracts with needed bacteria for digestion. Here at Ugab Oasis again, we watched the elephant pass by this area called the second spring. They liked playing in the spring. Here is Cheeky. He is waiting patiently for the others to move on so he could play. Eventually they do, and he has the spring to himself. This young one, feeling excited or angry, hurried from the spring and let out a good trumpet. On patrol, we collected poop from the young elephants for DNA analysis. Documenting lineage identifies the breeding bulls. We used a sterile stick to scoop up some poo, then put the sample into an envelope. The sample is sent to a lab in the United States. This is our patrol camp. The tarp is laid between the two parked land cruisers. This provides safety from passing animals at night. The camp is good design. We had elephants pass early one morning. What a great way to wake up to a parade of wild elephants. Here we are, settling into camp at the end of the patrol day. I climbed the hill over White Lady Lodge, where we had a cold beer at the end of this patrol day. Sanders is next to me, Chris and Matthias are leaders, and Harvey from Holland are behind me. This is the first patrol group of the last day of patrol. This is the second patrol group on the last day of my last patrol. On the Friday after patrol week, we pack up for the trip back to Swakamund. Goodbye to base camp, I will miss it. In Swak up on Friday night after a rotation, we all meet one more time for a farewell dinner. We met at Cookie's Pub for a great meal. We had hot beer, lousy food, bad service, but we were welcome and we had a really nice evening. My time with Era was quite remarkable. I met a lot of hardworking, wonderful people. It is interesting now, looking back to that first encounter with these wild, free-ranging desert elephants, I saw nothing more than just a herd of elephants. Now, after four brief weeks with Era, I recognize them as individuals. I know and respect them for the amazing creatures they are. It was hard to walk away from them, and hard I never will. I came home with the feeling of some achievement in helping the local people of Namibia and the unique desert elephant.